right everyone this is the video that a lot of you have been asking for and waiting patiently for uh, for whatever reason uh, my southern leopard frogs have proved to be some of my more popular animals that I keep in the basement and so I have been asked repeatedly by a few subscribers now to do a video on them now uh, I'm gonna try to cover all everything I can think of about these guys um, starting off with the tank setup so this is a 55 gallon aquarium I got it for free off the side of the road it has a broken trim on the side over there but uh, it works fine for these frogs now <clears throat> for substrate this is just uh, peat moss from Lowe's I just cleaned it and put the peat moss in there in the past I used like a peat moss topsoil sand mixture but I ran out of those two things all I had left was the peat moss so we're gonna we're trying out just that uh, I don't have any drainage in it um, I should and the next time I clean it I probably will put some gravel on the bottom and then some kind of netting or something now as for the the frogs themselves there are eight of them in there the plants are um, I don't know what these tall looking things are that's an umbrella plant right there and then there's golden pothos trailing off into the water there the plants that are in the water are fake and yeah the water looks pretty dirty but the frogs hop around in the dirt and then they hop in the water so you know um, and there's one right there so like I said before these are southern leopard frogs not to be confused with the northern leopard frogs um, trying to think of their their range I'll, I'll, I'll put a range map in here so you can see if these guys live near you yeah I live in New York State these guys just barely make it into New York State so these are not a native species to this specific area that I live in I got these guys at a at a uh, pet store PetSmart specifically they came in with a bunch of feeder goldfish as tadpoles and um, this is a common thing, you know, these goldfish are raised in outdoor ponds and then uh, frogs reproduce in those ponds. So the tadpoles get scooped up and send them shipped around. A lot of people uh, get these tadpoles and no doubt put them in their backyard ponds and things like that. But if these are not native to your area, then you really shouldn't do that. Um, so because they're not native here, I would never release them or think about putting them outside or anything like that. Now you can tell that they're southern leopard frogs and not northern leopard frogs because they have this, uh, the easiest way to tell is the white spot right on the eardrum there. I don't know if you can see it. In the round eardrum behind the eye, there's a little white spot on there. And as far as I know, that's the, the best indication of what they are. Alright, so you're probably wondering how these guys um, do as pets. And uh, truth be told, they're probably not the greatest uh, native frog species uh, simply because they hide a lot and they're very flighty um, I've told the story before but at one point I had one of these guys get out and I didn't even know about it must have hopped out when I was cl cage cleaning or something and it, I found it hopping across the floor one day and I managed to catch it but it gave me quite the runaround so you know I have a basement here and everything and I don't mind them, you know, I mean I don't want them to get out, but it's not like it's a big deal. Uh, but you know, depending on your situation, you might not want to, f to have to chase these frogs around your house, you know. So uh, that, you know, the fact that they're hard to catch and the fact that they, um, they hide a lot kind of conspire against them. I read a good care sheet the other day on reptilemagazine.com. <clears throat> they compared, and they compared these guys to the northern leopard frogs and it said that the northern leopard frogs make better pets they don't hide as much they're not as afraid of people so you know if you're into the leopard frogs maybe look into those I got these guys you know kind of on a fluke I didn't even know what they were gonna be when I got the tadpoles which was kind of fun and I, like I said I don't mind them also they're very noisy um, I don't know how you feel about the sounds of frogs croaking all night, but these guys have been croaking all winter long, and I'm sure in the spring they'll be croaking even more. 
but I like it. It reminds me of camping and it reminds me of the summertime being outdoors and herping. So I'm cool with it. Now there are eight frogs in here, uh, even though it is hard to actually find any of them. So again, that goes back to their secretive nature. They, uh, there's some flower pots in here that they hide under. That Sometimes they hide between the glass and the, the water bin. But there's one right there. And these guys are oh, almost three years old. This spring they'll be three years old. <clears throat> Originally I started out with nine. One of them died uh, shortly after it transformed from tadpole to frog. But no incidents with these guys since then. They're very hardy. For food, they naturally, you know, they eat uh, dusted crickets. Sometimes they'll eat roaches, mealworms. Basically anything that moves, they're, they're going to eat it. So I don't have any... I would like to have, like, tree frogs in here or something with them, but I'm not sure that's a good idea. I might experiment. I don't know. As far as daily care goes, you know, I suppose they're pretty easy to keep, which is, which is a good thing. Um, I miss them every day, even though they have a, a big water bin. I still miss them every day, partly for the plants. Um, but I only feed them about twice a week. These are adult frogs, they don't need to eat every day. And I, you know, honestly, I, I don't think I could afford to feed eight leopard frogs every day. But they do fine on their, I mean, some of these guys are pretty plump, as you've probably noticed. So they do fine, fed, uh, just a couple times a week, just throw a handful of crickets or whatever in there, and, you know, that's about it. They're pretty low maintenance, uh, you know, occasional spot cleaning. I do an overhaul uh, every six months or so and completely clean out this thing. Uh, as you can see, that you know, visually they're not the most beautiful of frogs. They're mostly like a, a brownish bronze. They got the black spots like leopard frogs do. Southern leopard frogs can also be green. And uh, I was hoping a few of these might turn out to be that way, but eh. Oh well. Those ends, uh, some other ones are like a mottled green and brown. These guys did breed for me last spring. They did lay eggs. Uh, I didn't bother trying to take care of them or hatch them because there's nothing I could really do with them. So most of them ended up becoming like fish food and turtle food or whatever. Um, but it was still fun and exciting to see, you know, see them uh, if reproduce. If you look, you'll see that white spot right there on the drum. And there you go, that's a southern leopard frog. They are quite similar to the plains leopard frog, but this will tell you the difference between these guys and the northerns. Yeah, that's pretty much what they look like. <laughs> and that is a frog, if I've ever seen one. Let's see if I can maybe get one of the bigger ones. There's one. Now these guys can get a bit bigger. Uh, like I said, these guys are only three years old, so they've probably got a little bit of growing left to do. But yeah, I guess that about does it. I mean, what else is there really to say about them? Um, you know, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I can answer them for you. But that's a, it's a rundown of the setup. And, um, you know, I'll probably film them again come spring and they start laying eggs. I would have liked to have gotten them calling, but... That's not always practical. So yeah, southern leopard frogs, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what else you'd like to see, and I will see you next time.